we are all here to do what Falcons do. Look at that! Okay, guys, here's what we're doing. We're going to run the piss out of this football. Hey, hey, I got you. We're getting ready to run the piss out of football. Yeah, Time to get something going. I got you. I- we are all here to do what Falcons do. Look at that! Can we rise up and thank God for this great, great week for the Falcons? I think that we can. And I think that even with the run, the uh, piss out of the ball clip, now we can say, hey, hey, we're going to throw the fucking football. I think we can finally actually say that now. And, you know, thank God that uh, Arthur Smith somehow, some way got some shit kicked into his head. And maybe it was just the bad football we saw in the first half. Obviously, I was at the game live, and I don't think we passed the 50-yard line um, in the first half. We didn't pass the 50-yard line. Obviously, we got the three points because, you know, Malik Willis happened or whatever. But, um, you know, three points, and then we got to see our backup tight end throw a pass to our third-string tight end while our fourth, fourth overall pick tight end was blocking on the play. Doesn't make sense to me, but, uh, you know, and then we settled for three, and pretty much the offense was just – it was a non-starter. It just wasn't getting done. The defense gave up some big plays. Of course, DeAndre Hopkins is an offensive pass interference for sure on that opening touchdown. Uh, But then we got things cooking in the second half, and you know why? Because Heineke season began. I wish I had a Heineken right now. I'd drink it. I would too. Heineke season began. We scored on every drive except one, and then technically the very last one too. But that was because Van Jefferson, you know, he's got bricks for hands. So, um, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited to see what comes, especially because this is a must-win game. And it's kind of crazy, too. You got Minnesota coming in town. Do you realize Minnesota, obviously, they're four and four. They've won three in a row. But Minnesota, if the playoffs began today, they'd be the seventh seed. I mean, they were starting to put it together. They had a good roster. Um, and Justin Jefferson should be back in two weeks. And Jordan Addison's really stepped up. But back to our Falcons. Uh, if you follow me on socials, you, you should have saw pretty much everywhere that I have social media. I said on Monday, even before it was announced that it was a day to celebrate. I knew we lost. But it was a day of celebration because Taylor Heineke threw for 171 yards in the second half. Do I think he's going to do that every week? No. I think some games he's only going to throw for 171 yards in all four quarters. Yeah. But what I saw was an opened up playbook. The ball going down the field, stretching the defense, which in turn will open up the run game so we can run the piss out of the ball. Which would then open up. I mean, Kyle Kyle Pitts looked like the person that we drafted in the second half. Why? Yeah. Because we had a quarterback who could throw the ball fifteen yards, twenty yards, twenty five yards down the field. You we, got to respect it. The first read was that's no longer the only read. <laughs> you know, we've got option three and four catching balls. We saw a Scotty Miller touchdown. You know what I mean? These are the things that when we sign these guys, you thought, hey, you know, why do we sign these guys if we're not going to throw them the ball? Why is it that Drake London is the only person that's getting targeted? And then occasionally, you know, Kyle Pitts gets targeted, but then he's getting overthrown. Like the ball's like 10 yards over his head. Like, why do we have these guys if we're not going to use them? But then you bring in a guy like Taylor Heineke and you're like, oh, that is why we signed Matt Collins. That's why we have these guys on the team that we brought in because they actually can play football. They're not just meant to be blocking and, and decoys for the first read on every play. They actually can bring something to the table, but we didn't know that. You know why? Because our quarterback failed to get the ball to any and everybody. He only had his first read, and if not, he's either already getting sacked or he's taking off running. And fumbling. And fumbling. Hey, you remember when uh, Desmond got drafted and he told uh, Arthur Smith about damn time? Yeah. (laughs) After watching Arthur Smith's press conference, I was like, it's about damn time. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I mean, it was such a slap in the face to the fan base. It was a slap in the face to whoever uh, drafts the, the Falcons players, whoever runs the personnel department. Having Desmond Ritter on the field was a slap in the face to them. 
I mean, hell, it was a slap in the face to Rich McKay. Yeah. And I think maybe Big Daddy Rich made a call downstairs and said, hey, my job here is, is solid. I'm not going anywhere. I've, I've, I I've, know where the money's being laundered. I've got, I know where the hookers are buried. I know everything. I can't leave. If I leave, well, this, this franchise is getting sold. That's a joke, guys. That's a joke. Yeah. Um, Not to mention business is booming with me. He's like, I, I've basically been in charge of the business side of this whole thing, and business is booming. But uh, if you want to keep working here, and I know we can't threaten you with money. Money's not an issue here. But if you want to do what it is that you that that you're that you think is your calling here, shout out to Coach Prime. And uh, you want a chance to coach NFL football team because you haven't won more than seven games. No guarantee you get another shot at being a head coach. Yeah. Um. You, you better drink your Heineken in the second half, there, Coach. Yeah, and, and it wouldn't surprise me, especially because of the reasoning behind everything. Really, really odd, you know, uh, things going on around that, right? Like you look at it and you say, okay, Taylor, I'm not Taylor Hockey. Desmond Ritter had a concussion. Nobody saw him go into a tent at any point before the uh, end of that half. Now, they said that they checked him out out back. I don't even remember really seeing a hit. Now, obviously, it could have happened on any play to where they would even think, like, yo, something's wrong with him. Nobody ever saw any of this. It all happened during halftime. So my assumption is he's getting checked out during halftime. Yep. They announced, hey, you know, he might have a concussion. Let's check it out. Then he gets checked, and they say, no, he doesn't have a concussion. He's good to go, coach. And then he just puts Heineke in, and it's just like he's trying to dress this thing up and, and just not say we benched the dude. And so I didn't really like I didn't really like that because it, it, it wasn't like you're giving the Vikings a competitive advantage either by saying this stuff because you knew you had to announce it and you knew that if Heineke was going to be the starter, which we all knew he was going to start because of how well he played in the second half, that he was going to be getting all the first team reps this week in practice. Yep. Just say that you benched him and that you were wrong about Ritter. It doesn't mean that you it's, – it's funny because here's the thing. He could actually still go back to Ritter too. All it yeah. takes is for Taylor Heineke to come in and look sorry as fuck. That's all it takes. And he'll throw Ritter right back in. Like, it wouldn't surprise me at all if something like that happened. Like, let's say that let's say that the game starts off really ugly against the Vikings. I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if he didn't think about putting Ritter back in, depending on how Taylor Heineke looks. Now, our expectation is that's not going to happen because Taylor Heineke typically, even in his time in Washington, you know, was it great? Absolutely not. But was it competent? Yes. He was playing competent quarterback. Hell, people don't realize this. Taylor Heineke went 5-4-1 and one last season as the starter of the commanders, right? So that's technically – that's a winning record, right? So, you know, I just I, – I, I, I'm thankful because I think that now, like you said, the offense is going to get opened up. And that's what all we've ever wanted. All we wanted was for the offense to be opened up. We weren't a, a threat throwing the football. We just weren't. No, and hopefully we can uh, get Bijan a little bit more active. I think he should get more carries, uh, pitch more touches. Hey, let me t- shoot this one at you, Parley Pete. And I and I was texting your brother about this. Uh, I think Sunday. Uh-huh. I'm less mad about the Drake London pick today than I was uh, th- at this point last year. I-, I don't think he was the best receiver in the class, but. He catches the ball, man, and he 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 makes great plays. Uh, no, he's not as fat. He's not the fastest receiver. Jameson Williams can't catch, so I'm um, glad we dodged that bullet. Chris Olave is good, but he doesn't have a quarterback, so I don't know what the hell he is, to be perfectly honest. And Garrett Wilson obviously is the best receiver production wise so far in that class, but Drake London's been fine. Like Drake, like. I'm not mad at the pick anymore. Yeah, and, and I, I don't think anyone should have been. I, I liked, you know, I didn't watch any of his stuff at USC. All I could do was pull a Josh Olsey and kind of just look at the statistics of it. But before we drafted him, think about it, he only played in seven games. He had 1,000 yards and like eight touchdowns. And I was like, and he, at the end of the day, USC is still USC. If you're a dog at USC, that means you're, you're probably just a fucking dog. Like, if you're a dog there, you are a dog. And so – um, I wasn't mad at the pick when it happened, especially because when I saw the pro day, I was like, God, he kind of looks like Mike Evans. I mean, that was 
my first thought. I was like, he, that's who he kind of looks like. He runs like him. Obviously, he's got the size of him. And he's proven so far early in his career that he can catch the ball, right? He's actually sure-handed. Yeah. He can make, the, he can make difficult catches. He's a big target, a solid run, run blocker, too. So, yeah, I, I, I liked everything about it. And, you know, it was unfortunate that he got hurt, too, because imagine if we did have him on that last drive. He didn't play on that last drive because he was out, too. Um, and, of course, we didn't have Grady Jarrett for the whole game, and now we don't have him for the rest of the year. Most unfortunate – thing i mean you're talking about really our i mean you could some could say jesse bates somebody even want to say i mean aj turrell even though he was getting kind of he did get kind of cooked but uh and i don't know if that was scheme i don't know what the hell that was but i don't know the coverage they were running but it appeared that he was getting cooked yeah he looked like he was getting cooked um but you start talking about you're losing the heart and soul of the defense the leader the one holdover from your super bowl team is gone now and he he's an important piece, and we didn't you know we didn't go out and get Montez Sweat like many thought we would because all you would have had to have done was move Calais Campbell over to the middle. Yep. Then he's he's the one that's rocking the DT, DT, and then you got Sweat on the edge, proud to be home and play for probably his favorite team growing up. You know what I mean? But uh, that's okay. Chicago took a bullet for us because my expectation, based on the quote that he gave, is that he's not resigning there. And obviously, it's known that the Falcons want him and that he wants the Falcons. So hopefully, that's the guy we go after this uh, offseason. Yeah, man. And if we can get him without having to give up an asset, then we won. 